Okay, today we're going to take a look at Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix. Obviously, it's not an official Ubuntu flavor as of yet, though it, it might become one in the future, but that's total speculation on my part, so don't go quoting me on anything. So a new ISO for 20.10 Groovy Gorilla Run Stable is currently being uploaded, and as of one day ago, it is now available on SourceForge, which is where we did grab it, and that's what we're running right now. So it says that there, it's pretty much confirmed that Cinnamon 4.6 will be in Ubuntu Cinnamon 20.10, However, it's not in there yet. I did a quick apt cache policy of Cinnamon, and as you can see, we're using 4.4.8-4. But this is still early days, and I'm going to imagine come sort of October time, I think, is when they're doing the final sort of Ubuntu 20.10 releases. I think it should be in there by then, hopefully. So what we're going to do is have a little look around. Before we do that, though, because I'm not recording off the capture card today, I've taken a quick screenshot of the RAM usage. Oh, it's opening up in GIMP by default. Okay, we'll, we'll change that. So at boot, it was using 924 megabytes of RAM. I gave it a couple of sort of seconds, you know, 35 seconds there to sort of normalize it. And I took the screenshot. That does seem a bit high compared to sort of Linux Mint Cinnamon. I think it's probably a couple of hundred megabytes high. Maybe not quite that much, but it's definitely higher than what I would expect it to be. And then I also took a screenshot of just a window there just to show you that we have installed OBS and it does pull a lot of things in extra as well. So if there's RAM's higher than it was at the beginning, that might be sneaking suspicion of why. And obviously VLC comes included with OBS when you do the apt install of OBS Studio, which is why you would then see VLC in there as well as OBS because their default is celluloid now for media players. I think it has been since it first came out actually. But that's why you might see VLC there as well. So before we get going and having a look, the main thing I want to take a look at is the desktop layout switcher because I've never actually seen the, the way the, the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix does it. Because the I think the only time I've looked at Ubuntu Cinnamon was when it was sort of initially coming out. So it's going to be a nice little sort of refresher and to see what's new basically. So what we're going to do before we do that though is go into the default applications, preferred applications on Cinnamon. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. So as you can see, GIMP is set as the default thing to open up photos but unless you're editing an image you won't really want to open up GIMP every time it's a bit heavy just to sort of look at an image so we're going to change it to image viewer though you could also change it to Firefox or Pix so we're going to go for image viewer and let's just see what else their defaults are so your default is obviously Nemo for your files web browser is Firefox mail is Thunderbird documents like a sort of ODT or dot, dot docx or whatever the Microsoft one is is writer as well as your plain text is writer some music is done it as VLC but I don't know if that would have been the case because we installed VLC in the beginning your default media player is MPV but you could also just use celluloid let's leave it on VLC though and then again you've got LibreOffice for source code okay PDF is also opening up in GIMP let's change that to document viewer terminal terminal calculator okay brilliant so let's close all of that and we're going to jump straight into the desktop layout switcher so let's have a little look here. So the utility changes the layout of the panel, taskbar, and other items of the Cinnamon desktop interface. So at the moment we're on the default, which is the standard Cinnamon layout with your taskbar at the bottom, a show desktop button, and some, is that a quick launch? No, so just a show desktop button, no quick launches. You have your clock to the right, as well as your sort of sound and network and things like that. And then opening that up will be your menu with a few little buttons to the left there. So let's have a look at what we got. So we have a traditional, which is the Windows XP inspired layout with non-grouped Windows list. So what I'm going to imagine that's going to do is remove these sort of icon only sort of list and make it a like a bar with the Windows titles on it and then it won't be grouped, it'll be one bar for each program. So we're going to change it, hopefully it doesn't mess with the OBS recording, that's one of the benefits that I usually like when I'm using the capture card. I don't have to worry about any random crashes and stuff like that, corrupting video files, but we're going to cross our fingers and hope for the best. Okay, uh -huh. so what's this, update system default. Default to traditional, we won't have it as the default, but we'll keep it like that at the moment. Okay, the screen just flashed. I'm hoping the recording is okay. Okay, so we've got another little dialogue here telling you that it's finished. Please reboot your computer if you have any trouble. So we won't reboot. If we do have any trouble, we will though. So what that's now done is shrunk our panel to a different sort of size now, so it's quite a bit smaller. So if we go into panel settings, that shrunk it all the way down to 28, which is kind of the size I usually have it on. I'll flicker between 26 and 28 myself. And then it's obviously, like I said, you've got the um, ungrouped windows buttons there that have the actual title of the window that's there, like so. 
Um, does it do anything else? So it makes that icon there rather small. That's quite hard to see, really. I think that could be a bit better. Maybe make it a bit bigger. So if you check, make the panel larger, that should become larger. You still have the show desktop button. Yep, you do. And I think that's, for the most part, all that really changes. So now if we go back into the layout switcher. So it closes every time. So it would be quite cool if it stayed open so you could sort of go through the one and preview which one you wanted before you used it without having to open it up every time. Redmond 7. So it's a Windows 7 inspired layout with grouped windows list. So I'm going to imagine it's going to look quite similar, but then it's going to be grouped windows with perhaps just an icon and not the... Uh, window title and things like that so let's go on to Redmond 7 yeah like I thought so not too dissimilar from cinnamon really so we don't want that as the default another dialogue come up there it is so again that's still quite small that might be left over from um, the Windows XP kind of look it might be if you reboot it might change it we'll try that towards the end though so let's jump back into the layout switcher again. Yeah, it would be nice if it didn't keep closing the Windows layout switcher. So Cupertino is the Mac OS OS X inspired layout. So it's going to give you a plank at the bottom and it's probably going to move your panel to the top. Let's have a look. Like I thought. And it's also done a bit of transparency on our panel there as well with the extension uh, dynamic uh, transparent panels, I'm going to imagine. So let's click no. And then let's jump into the extensions a moment. And I'm going to imagine what that has done has enabled transparent panels. There we go. So it is nice having this all in one easy to use program. I do like these whole layout switches. I think they are very handy. Do we have any additional themes in Plank though? So the theming wise, no. So if you wanted to download some different themes and get it a bit of a different look and feel, it's not too hard to just install a new theme and then right click on their preferences, go into there and then make a new theme in there. Okay, so that's the Mac stuff. Um, again, the button's still rather small. Um, we will try a reboot though and see if anything changes towards the end about that button. I think that could do with being a little bit larger. And the panel size there looks at about 32 or something. So if we go into panel settings now. Nope, 28 as well. It just looks a bit larger at the top, I suppose. Oh, and it's moved our Windows minimize and sort of action buttons to the left now. So if we open up another program like Nemo, buttons are now to the left. I don't know if that was the case before, but we shall see. Right, so now let's change it to a different one. So let's close these ones off. Also, obviously, your programs will be launching and minimizing from the plank now, and there will be no icons on your panel anymore. Obviously, that's the way Mac does it, so that's the paradigm you're going to be following. So let's get out of that and then reopen the layout switcher. So that was Cupertino. So Unity is going to be the one that I'm most interested in. Obviously, I like a, I just like Unity, and I think the layout's very handy. So let's see how it looks with the Unity layout. So it's an Ubuntu Unity inspired layout. So let's go to OK. Um, blah, 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 blah. Nope. There we go. Look at that. OK, so what that's done is give us a panel to the top and then an extended panel here with also a trash can there. And then your application launch is now there instead of the top panel. It's in the left panel. And again, you can also just get it by going left super. And let's see what happens when we open up a program. Oh, that's show desktop, isn't it? So now our buttons are now to the right. Do they go up in here or anything? No, although it's got dynamic panel, so that's very nice. So when you maximize a window, the transparency of the panels will then match the sort of color of the window application theme a little bit. It still has the dynamic um, transparency a little bit with the shade, but I like that. Very nice indeed. Side by side splitting. And see how that looks as well. Let's open up computer, do the same thing. Right, so that hasn't quite got the dynamic transparency when you do it like that, but if you full screen, it does. Okay, interesting. It might be nicer if it done that as well with side by side snapping, but not to worry. Okay, so that's the Unity one. Let's take a look at, I think there's maybe one more, wasn't there? Was there two? Let's have a look. So, Unity widescreen, so left panel widescreen layout. I'm not sure how that's going to do it. There's going to be no guesswork in this one. No. And um, there's going to be one more dialog. There it is. There we go. Right, so that's given us another panel there. And again, our button's there. Another small button. All of your launchers are there, like your um, open windows with just the icon task list. And then you have no icons to hide or reveal. So this is all your sort of system tray icons. And does that do anything on my second screen? No. So we just have the one panel then, and it's... Um, to the left. I don't think there's too much to really talk about that. 
might be useful some of you guys that like the idea i'd probably stick with unity though the unity layout if you're going to go for a left panel and then also have the panel at the top just to get a bit more information showing and things like that okay cool let's jump back into the layout switcher and check out the final one which is gnome 2 so it will have the sort of two panel layout like the old classic gnome 2 but let's have a look at how it all looks on here okay so world clock calendar this output does not support panels of this type this can cause visual glitches in the panel would you like to continue using it anyway okay let's remove it then now we'll leave it for now and see what visual glitches we might get so let's go for no okay so this is the um oh we'll get another dialogue there we go i do think it can have a little bit of work done to it that layout switcher to make it a bit more seamless but other than that it seems okay so we now have the two panel layout so the panel at the bottom will be your running windows which has the name of the um, window that's running as well as the um, icon next to it and it will not be grouped so each window of each program will have its own entry you then have the show desktop button there and you've got your workspace switcher there which has quite a nice fast animation trash can as well is to the right and now to the top you have your application launcher again and you have places which will be sort of quick links so you've got your home desktop connect and computer file system and then there's some of your home directory folders there you have a couple of quick launch icons at the top here so just clicking that will then open up your file manager which is nemo and again your windows buttons are to the right your action buttons and then all of your system stuff and your clock and stuff is all around here nice right what we're going to do is set it to the unity one and do a reboot have a little look around at a couple more things and then we're going to wrap it up there so let's just quickly change it to the unity layout and we're going to set it as the default so let's go for unity click ok um, so we're going to update it this time so we will need to provide a password and then that will flash again there we go almost like a screenshot animation and we're going to click ok right what we're going to do is stop the recording do a reboot and just have a final little look around things see what if there's any new applications i haven't taken a look at and yeah so let's just stop the recording now okay so we're back in business so a couple of things that i do want to take a look at like i said at the beginning because linux mint has dropped the whole snap d thing this might be a good alternative for those guys that do sort of rely on swap swap snap and don't want to go through the sort of rigmarole of re-enabling it so let's go into the software store which will be let's have a look so it has synaptic but it also has software is this gnome software looks like it might be so if we go into about software 3.360 so it appears to be gnome software and it should have the snapd plugin so if we search for something like Caden live there you go so you've got two entries there one will be from the repos and then one will be from snapcraft which is this one here so you still have your snap packages here and then like i said this will be from the repo as you can see ubuntu groovy universe there we go i'll tell you what we're going to do because i'm going to edit this video on this machine we are actually going to use a snap we are going to install the caden live snap so let's go for it i haven't done this in quite a while let's type in a password right that's going to install that snap for us and also you can change the source there from ubuntu snap store to snap store Right, let's minimize that. I'm gonna have a very quick run through the applications. I don't think too much has changed from the last time we took a look at it though. So one thing that will be different from the whole um, uh, Linux Mint side of things on Cinnamon is you won't have Warpinator out of the box. You won't have the same Linux Mint backup tool. Backups will be done with Deja Dup by the looks of things. There we go. Um, to be honest though, Deja Dup's a fairly good backup tool. I use it on my actual personal machine, just the backup, and it's fairly straightforward. Folders to ignore, scheduling, network folders, etc so not really too much to complain about there to be fair with you um, anything else that i want to have a look at so it still comes with a few known games there like 2048 chess mahjong and sudoku so pix was one of the other image viewer programs so it's like more of a gallery so there's all the current images we have on the computer so let's close that and then let's open up see if there's anything else i want to have a look at thunderbird so you get the full liberal office suite which will be 4.6 something let's have a look Let's see how it looks full screen as well and the Unity layout it does look quite nice, doesn't it? I like it. So let's go for OK. And if we go to Help and About, I just want to double check that I am, yeah, four point, uh, 6.4. Did I say 4.6? Probably. I meant 6.4. OK, so the last thing I really want to take a look at is the appearance. So if we go into, what does it call it? OK, Caden Live just installed. You get a notification at the top right. Uh, cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Look and feel. Themes, there we go. And here we go so let's have a look so the default theming is kimo dark and it's the orange color 
scheme. I don't know if I'm a massive fan of the oranges, but that's neither here nor there to be fair. You can change all of that if you really want. So let's go into the Windows boards and see what else it comes with. So you have Kimo RX New Mix. Kimo RX Arc. Okay, let's see what this all looks like together. Let's go into the icons. So you also have ePapyrus, the Papyrus icons, Kimo Dark, Papyrus Dark. Okay, let's change it to Papyrus Dark. And let's go for the controls and get the, um, you have Adwater Dark as well in here and Adwater Light. Where was the Arc one? There we go. So there's Kimo RX Arc. Do we have Dark Arc? I can't see a Dark Arc. RX Arc. Let's see what that's like. So that's more like the Arc Darker, not the Arc Dark. I wonder if we can get the Arc Dark RX theme. Is it on here? Kimo RX Arc. Kimo RX New Mix. No. Okay, not to worry. So let's see what else we've got in the desktop. So we have Kimo RX Arc as well. Let's see what that looks like. I've not actually ever used this theme. Okay, let's full screen it and see what the colours are like. So it's the same sort of colour scheme there. It does look quite nice though. So there's no groovy gorilla wallpapers as of yet as far as I'm, as I'm aware so you will be limited to whatever's on this unstable one at the moment which is obviously the Fockel Fossa one with the laser beams. Are they laser beams? I'm going to call them laser beams coming out of the eyes. So if we go to change desktop background let's see what else it comes with already. So here's the whole Fockel folder there. Oh what's this one? Oh I like that. I think that's rather nice. That is nice actually isn't it? I haven't seen this one yet. Huh, I like it. What else have we got in here? So this will all be from the Fockle release. So if we just go into wallpapers, anything in there. Oh, we've got some actual cinnamon stuff. Let's have a look. Oh, what's this? Oh, I like that. That's very nice, that is. Let's have a look at this one. Not bad, not bad. And that one. I think that's nicer than the first one we just looked at. Um, the second one, even that one. And then finally this one. I do like their uh, their logo. I think it's nice, that. Okay, I'm going to leave it on this, actually. I think that's a really nice and clean wallpaper. Minimal sort of wallpaper I'd actually look for if I was to use it. And obviously you have... Do you have four-way split? You do. You have four-way window snapping out of the box. What is this terminal? Uh, who cares? Let's go to help and about and just see what terminal this is. Gnome terminal. Okay. Didn't look like gnome terminal at first, actually. Hmm. So can we go into edit preferences, colors, so you can make it transparent as well if you wanted to, bang. And let's see how much RAM we've managed to use at the moment with OBS going as well, 2.2. But what I'm gonna do is a final reboot. I see what RAM we're running at now, it's all said and done and that we've installed a couple of packages including the Snap of Caden Live as well as VLC and OBS. So we started at about 929. Okay, we are back in business. So the RAM usage was about 1.11 gig. Let's just have a look quickly. Where is it? This one here. Zoom. What's the zoom? There we go. So yeah, 1.11 gig. Something I did notice in the installer, it uses Calamares. It didn't give us an option. When we done the erase disk, we just done a straight erase disk. It made an EFI partition and then your root. It didn't give us the option to make a swap partition in the installer as it stood. And I assumed it might have made a sort file, but as we can see there, it hasn't. So if you wanted to sort of fallocate a swap file, you could do that. Or you could just make a swap partition in the manual partitioning. Bear in mind, again, this is the 20.10 unstable ISO, so a lot of things could be subject to change. But overall, I'm actually quite liking this. Um, obviously, I've not really used Cinnamon loads in my sort of Linux history, but I've slowly started to appreciate why Cinnamon is there. And it is a good desktop environment, to be fair with you. Their Unity layout, beautiful. If I was to use this as a daily driver, I would definitely be using it in the Unity layout. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.